It's a small voltage and current source for calibrating Simpson meters, made of Amazon stuff. And I'm going to show you how I use it to calibrate my Simpson meter in the first half of the video. What makes this special? Well, it's got a low voltage voltage source and a low current current source. The range of the voltage only goes up to a few hundred millivolts, and the current only goes up to a few hundred microamps, which is pretty handy for calibrating a Simpson meter. I didn't have anything like that in my lab, so I made this. Additionally, I put a microcontroller in there so I can save calibration data. So how do I use it to calibrate a Simpson meter? Here is the Simpson meter operator's manual. And here is the heart of the Simpson meter. This part right here. That is the ammeter, and these two variable resistors are for calibrating the heart. I'm going to give you the punchline. To calibrate the Simpson meter for DC voltage and current measurements, you need to fiddle with these two variable resistors to make the ammeter read 50 microamps when 50 microamps is forced through right here. And read 250 millivolts when 250 millivolts is applied right here. In other words, this part right here, the heart, has to be calibrated to look like 5,000 ohms to the rest of the circuit. This is the front of a Simpson 260 meter, just the ammeter, not the circuit part. A few years ago now, we found that if you force current through a wire, you generate a magnetic field proportional to the amount of current. That magic with a couple of permanent magnets makes this needle deflect. Let me show you with the current setting on my device. These plugs are connected directly to the ammeter with no other circuitry in between. Now, if I force current through it, there, you can see I can control the needle for various amount of microamps I force through it. But now look at this. When I force 48 microamps through, the needle gets deflected to full scale. That's not what I want. I want that to be at full scale when I force 50 microamps through it. But you can see here that 50 microamps goes beyond full scale. So how do I make the needle point to here, full scale, when I push 50 microamps through it? This is where the calibration resistor comes in. If the resistor is not in there, all 50 microamps through the current source goes through the ammeter, which will overdrive the needle. But if I place a resistor in parallel with the ammeter, I can vary it so that a couple of microamps get sucked through here. Then the ammeter will only draw 48 microamps when 50 microamps is pushed in. That resistor gives me the ability to adjust where the needle points when I stuff 50 microamps through the combination of the ammeter and the resistor, and therefore gives me a mechanism to calibrate the needle. Here is a demonstration. I have this variable resistor in parallel with the ammeter. Ignore this other potentiometer for right now and I have 50 microamps being forced through. As I adjust the resistance, there, I'm calibrated. 50 microamps in causes the needle to point to full scale, to 50 microamps. But now, what happens when I use the voltage source to drive the ammeter? I can clearly use a voltage to drive the ammeter. That's because a voltage across the ammeter causes a current to flow through it. But look at this. It only takes about 89 millivolts to drive the needle to full scale. That's not what we want. Based on the screen here and the operator's manual, we want 250 millivolts in to cause this needle to deflect here, not 89 millivolts. So how do we fix this? This is what I have right now. Instead of a current source driving the ammeter and resistor, I have a voltage source driving the two. When I apply 89 millivolts right here, the ammeter reads full scale. But I want it to read full scale when 250 millivolts is applied right here. So how do I modify the circuit to make this happen? I add a resistor right here, which gives me a voltage divider. 
I can use the two resistors to divide 250 millivolts down to the 89 millivolts I need, which causes the needle to deflect in full scale. And that's exactly what we saw earlier in the Simpson operator's manual. Those two resistors along with the ammeter makes up what I'm calling the heart of the Simpson meter. So now here's the demonstration with both resistors. A little bit ago, we calibrated current with this potentiometer, and we can use this potentiometer to divide 250 millivolts down to the 89 millivolts that the meter requires to be at full scale. Moving this up to 250 millivolts. And ta-da! When we put 250 millivolts in, the scale now reads 250 millivolts. The heart of the Simpson meter is calibrated. And this is exactly what I do when I'm calibrating my meters. This variable resistor right here is the one used to calibrate the current going through the ammeter. And this one right here is used for dividing down the voltage. If you look at the circuit diagram in the Simpson meter operator's manual, you will see that this input right here is the port where you can inject 50 microamps and 250 millivolts to do the calibration. Here I'm showing that I'm putting 250 millivolts in and the scale is showing that I'm reading 250 millivolts at full scale. I can also move over to my current source. And this shows that 50 microamps go, going in causes the needle to deflect to full scale, as it should. If you're doing this yourself, make sure the meter is lying face up when you adjust the variable resistors. That's the orientation these meters are meant to be used in for best accuracy. You may find that to be the challenging part of the exercise requiring some physical flexibility. <clears throat> so what about the rest of the ranges? How is this heart used to say measure the one volt range? Well remember, we just calibrated voltage and current at full scale to be 250 millivolts and 50 microamps. So we calibrated this section right here to look like 5,000 ohms. To the rest of the meter, the heart just looks like a 5K ohm resistor. Once you have that calibrated, you're basically relying on the rest of the precision resistors to correctly divide the input voltage and current down to 50 microamps and 250 millivolts. For example, if I look at the one volt range portion of the circuit, I see a 15K ohm resistor in series with the 5k ohm heart. So I have this 15k ohm resistor in combination with this 5k ohm resistor that divides one volt down to 250 millivolts. And that gives you the one volt scale. By the way, on the one volt scale, when you have this 15k ohm resistor in series with this 5k ohm resistance, what do you get as an input resistance from the terminals? <gasps> All the rotary switch does on the Simpson meter is divide voltages and currents down to the 250 millivolt slash 50 microamp range using the fact that the Simpson heart looks like a 5k ohm resistor. I would go into more detail, but after I started this video, I realized that W2AEW already made an excellent video about, well, basically everything I'm talking about now. I linked his video below. If you want a lot of great detail on how to calibrate a Simpson meter, go watch his video. Not only does he show you how to calibrate the DC section of the meter, he also describes what to do if you want to calibrate the AC portion. I don't use these things for AC. He even shows you how to make a cool current source to calibrate your meter. But don't go yet. In a minute, I'll show you another way to generate 50 microamps, as well as a way to generate 250 millivolts that only requires an op amp and a voltage power supply. All that's really in here is an Arduino Nano, a MCP4725D to A, 
and an LM358 op amp. And then just some switches, connectors, and knobs that I bought off of Amazon. These are the circuits I use to make the current and voltage source in my device. So in my project, I drive them with a digital to analog converter. You don't need that though. You can drive them with a power supply in your lab. For generating 50 microamps, this is a really simple way to make a current source. The high gain of the op amp causes the output to try to force the voltage here to be the same as it is here. This voltage divided by this resistance will be the current that goes through this resistor. And since no current or very little current goes into the op amp, the current going through this resistor will be the same as the current going through this path right here through the ammeter. So I have a current source that's driven by a voltage source. I find this setup to be a really nice way to control ammeters in my projects. Just use the D to A on a microcontroller and you can control where the ammeter points. Pretty simple, and here it is on the breadboard. Instead of using an Arduino with a digital to analog converter, I use my power supply. If I set that resistor to 100K ohms, then varying the input of the power supply from zero to five will cause the current source to go from zero to 50. That's actually 120K because it was on my desk. And since that resistor might not be perfect and my power supply might not be perfect, I put a DMM in the loop so I can monitor the actual current going through the Simpson meter. So here it is. Changing the voltage controls the current. I can move this up till I get to 50 microamps and then I can make my adjustments on the Simpson meter. This isn't quite pointing to 50 microamps because this is standing up. It should be lying down when you do the calibration. A cooler implementation of a current source, at least one more interesting, is described in W2AEW's video, which I'll link below. His implementation is done purely with discrete components, which I dig. My current source is more of a lazy millennial implementation. Both work though. If you want something quick and dirty, just use an LM358 and slap this on a breadboard. For the milliamp voltage source, I just use two resistors to divide down the voltage from a voltage supply. And then I use the other package in the LM358 as a buffer. I don't know what kind of power supply you have, but mine doesn't have a lot of resolution in and around a milliamp. So I just divide down the voltage with a couple of resistors and use the op amp as a buffer. Since the heart of the meter is only 5,000 ohms, I need the output of my voltage source to be much smaller than that. And that's what the op amp helps me out with. Here I am using my voltage source to dial the voltage into 250 milliamps. And I can get pretty close in resolution because of what I did with the op amp. The nice thing about throwing a microcontroller into the box is that I can do a fairly reasonable calibration. To do that, I made a bunch of measurements over the range of control inputs and linearly interpolate to the output. I'm fairly confident that the current that shows up on the face here is within about a couple of tenths of a microamp. Voltage is within a couple of tenths of a millivolt, at least with respect to my fluke meter that hasn't been calibrated in 10 years. I find that a tenth of resolution is about the width of the gauge, so any more resolution than that isn't needed all that much. I can use this to pretty easily get to within the 2% of full scale accuracy quoted in the manual. Hey, thanks for watching my show and tell. I'm pretty much done, but it's probably worth mentioning after calibrating the heart thing within the Simpson meter, all ranges of the meter should be within spec if the resistors haven't drifted over the last few decades, which is actually a pretty big if. So if you try to verify one of your DC ranges and it's out of spec, start measuring the resistors that divide down the voltage or current for that range and check if they are within tolerance the tolerance shown within your Simpson operator's manual. If they ain't within tolerance, hunt them down and replace them. Also, I'm not a Simpson meter calibrator by trade. I only know what I know by popping the hood off of these things. 
I'm just a guy that's maybe taken a hobby a little too far. But to within the accuracy that I want these meters, my calibration works fine for me. That was fun. That's all for now.